Hi everybody, I'm Johnny Gould and here's something for the weekend. Well, coming up on this week's show, our rappers boys enjoying being put on the spot. Teddy proves he's lost none of his ball skills and which footballer looks like this dashing English actor. And speaking of dashing, the most inappropriate link I can think of, Mr John Lay is back. Johnny boy, you're you the hot You built me up and then you knocked me down. He'd obviously really, really missed me last week when I was away I on international I duty. did really miss yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, like the text that kept bombarding me while I was trying to work. What text was that? Along the lines of don't rush back, we're okay without you, and Andrew Baker <laughs> is a such a great job. replacement. Yeah, he I'm did a very good job. Top man, top yeah, man. Yeah. But he didn't exactly fill me with no, the confidence lovely. sort of rush back. It's lovely to have you back. Seriously, it's lovely to have you back. <laughs> now, we've had an email, you're going to love this, John, from a fan of the show who goes by the initials OJB, Whale, to his friends. Whale, thank you so much for this. Basically, what he wants is a bit of trivia knowledge, and he thinks you're the man. He actually says, I'm sure our data bank of knowledge that is John Lay, so there you go, somebody loves you, would have no problem with the following. He wants to know which Premier League team has had the most penalties awarded to them and which team has had the most awarded against them. We're actually going to go one step further than that OJB so check it out. We'll start with the penalties awarded and scored. Okay first of all and scored. So here we go as you can see Liverpool awarded five scored five as was Wigan and if you go slightly further down Fulham 100% record as well four for four. It's quite unusual to get everyone in the back of the net I and mean, it's a very very good email from uh, OJB because it, you know five that's five goals they wouldn't have had otherwise and it's also very telling when you go further down the table as well. But I'm surprised that so many of the teams that are of course up in the relegation mire are actually in the top of that table but anyway we'll move on here are those not getting the decisions uh, in the box Bolton you've got to feel for them because not only they bottom the table with only one awarded <laughs> but they actually it. didn't <laughs> was unsuccessful as well uh, Chelsea now there's a proof of the pudding that we'd be top of the table if we were getting a fair shout <laughs> when it comes to penalty decision. And what surprised me is when you think they play what 30, 31 games and the most that any one team has been awarded is only five penalties. That I, is extraordinary. I'll tell you what, for it? next week I'll look back over the last couple of seasons and see you know, whether this is unusual, whether fewer penalties are being awarded. Now we can look at the teams being reckless with their challenges in the penalty area. Check this out. Wow. This, this look is the most that. telling stat. This. I mean 50% more than the second place team that is Bolton. Newcastle have yeah. conceded nine penalties. Is that just bad luck? Or is that bad defensive judgment? So they're a bad team. End of story. And I don't think anything that Alan Shearer can do and Ian Dowie can do will prevent them from going down. Sorry, but the, I just think that sums up their season. Okay. But it's interesting, Bolton, you know, we've mentioned about they haven't scored from the penalty spot yet, but they've still managed to be the second worst team when it, it comes, comes to conceding. conceding goals. What a difference that might have made to their season. Yeah. And also interesting, how often do we hear the line, Man United, nobody ever gets a penalty against them. I'd love to know of those three that they've conceded, how many were conceded away from home? And how many we can see at Old Trafford? Love to know that information. Mm -hmm. Right, let's have a look at the teams not giving anything away. Uh, and the vast majority have given at least two or three, bar one. Bar one. Team at the bottom. Not a single penalty can see. No, no, give, give me some comment first, John. You know, we've got Fulham, Liverpool, they've only conceded two. I mean, this does surely suggest these are good defensive sides. And yet, Middlesbrough, Stoke, in the serious relegation mire, they're not conceding penalties, but we know they've got defensive frailties. Do, do you know what it d does tell you? that the referees are un intimidated by the Chelsea players. <laughs> They're too scared to give penalties. And that's what it's in. Nothing to do with defensive Don't capability. Don't give me that. John Terry, Frank Lampard's give it all that. The referees go, oh, sorry, won't give a rep penalty. OK, I think it's time to ignore John Lay. I should have done that a lot earlier. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea showing their class, their sheer unadulterated class with a capital C, giving away no penalties at all. Oi, wake up, lad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Time for Footy Tube, and this week we have an ad that's undoubtedly highlighting a good cause, but it is still a little disturbing. Check it out. It involves our good friend Teddy Sherry. Great Teddy. Remember, Great Teddy. keep your eye on the ball. Man, you, Spurs, this is worrying. <laughs> oh, my lord. Do you, think, do you think possibly this should be after the watershed? <laughs> Well, it could have been worse. It could have got Beckham. But that would be golden ball. <laughs> I mean, as you say, fantastic calls. So it's a major, major problem amongst young men. And the more it's highlighted, the better. And if they want to get your attention, then golly, they've done it. They're way, I love the finish. Way. Oh. 
It is, of course, testicular cancer that they're advertising, but I have to say, I still find that advert particularly concerning. Uh, if, of course, he was a tennis player, we would be now saying, new balls, please. <laughs> Well, on to crap lookalike, and this week we've received a suggestion from Dan Ingram. Thank you very much for this, Dan, who's clearly a proper thespian because he reckons there's someone who looks like actor James Purefoy. You remember James Purefoy? Uh, the man from uh, The Romans, That's isn't right, it? he yes, played uh, Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony, yeah. You can see yeah. that from the look. Any thoughts on who he might look like in the world of Premier League football? It's got to be somebody dark, I would guess, but he's a, he's a tall man. He's, um, I mean, he's very much an Englishman. In, could it be another Englishman? I don't could know. Could it be? Well, let's have a look. You're completely wrong! Because it's actually Peter Cech. Petr Cech. Petr Cech actually looks like a Roman there, doesn't he? He's, as if he's just about to cast a thumb up or down <laughs> for the slaughter of Manchester Well, United. on the basis of the Roman connection, they do have a sort of Caesarian Roman nose. James I'll go Purifoy with that. was actually, they'd be considering him uh, to be the new uh, James Bond before uh, Daniel Craig. So, uh, well, I can see that. He's a bit dashing. You know, Peter he Cech can see him coming yeah. to the rescue when all the baddies come, he's talented. come up at Chelsea. He's good looking. He's English. He could be the presenter of something for the weekend. <laughs> but I'm already doing the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, move on. <laughs> OK, on to this weekend's fixtures now. And Johnny Boy, the massive relegation, proverbial six-pointers. Have a look. We've got Middlesbrough, Hull, Stoke, Newcastle. Surely it's curtains if you lose one of those games. Sharp end time now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Newcastle, I've mentioned them before. This is a massive game. This is their game of the season. They go to Stoke, who've got a very good win at West Brom. And I just fancy Stoke will win and win easily and it will be over for Newcastle. And then the other big one, of course, is Middlesbrough against Hull. And Middlesbrough have to win. If Middlesbrough don't beat Hull, and let's face it, Hull aren't pulling up any trees at the moment. If Middlesbrough don't beat Hull, mm. not only, you know, that Middlesbrough will be virtually down. Hull have to win to stand any chance of keeping away from that pack. Massive weekend for them. Um, and, you know, for several other sides as well. It's a huge weekend. I'm a huge fan of Gareth Southgate. Uh, I've got to say, if Middlesbrough do go down, I hope Mr Gibson holds firm. I hope Look at his track record, he will. He, you think keep, so? He might lose a few of the better players, like the Pogatets and Ali Dier and a few others, but I, I think he'll keep faith with the manager, yeah. OK, one other thing we do want to talk about is the top four, all in Europe this week, uh, and yet not one of them is playing on Sunday to give them an extra day's rest. No, I mean, they could argue it's fair for everyone because you know, we've heard Wenger complain, we've heard... Uh, Fergie complained it's not fair for one and one or the other. They're all playing on a Saturday, although the two teams that played on Tuesday night may have a very slight advantage. But it's an interesting thing because it is, of course, Easter weekend. Yeah. And traditionally, there is no football played on Easter Sunday. Yeah. And I can't understand why they can't play on Good Friday and Easter Monday as they used to and leave the Sunday free, you know, for those that want to, to, to celebrate a, a, as they want to. The church have actually complained, and the top guys in the church have actually written to the Premier League and made right. an official complaint to Richard Scudamore, saying that you know you have um, diluted the whole meaning of Easter by having two games. Am I not right in saying that the shops aren't allowed to open? Um, I, some I, sort I, of legal I think precedent. the DIY. I think that yeah, I think the DIY and the garden shops can, but the supermarkets can't. That's but bizarre, there's nothing to stop you from having um, sporting events. And of course, there is one reason why Man City are playing on the Sunday is because they are playing. Because they're they heathens. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not go. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> because they play. They had a UEFA Cup yeah. quarter final right. against Hamburg, and of course the top four have got European games next week as well. So yeah. it's, so it's, it's so sort so of so you know, what they so, so, yeah. lost this week. They're going to gain next yeah, week. But I can't understand the scheduling. Sometimes you know there is a full program of the Championship games on Monday. Yeah, but there's nothing in the Premier League. Why couldn't they have just switched those two forward? Because the the, the guys who are playing on the uh, Sunday yeah. are not involved in the Champions League. No, they're not. So, yeah. and you know, City could have played on the Monday and then played on the Thursday, yeah. next Thursday. So, there you go. Good point. Nice to know your uh, religious qualities stay firm. Well, uh, that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, you can test your football knowledge against uh, His Holiness John's Quiz at the Telegraph website at the address below. And if you do want to get in touch, we'd love to hear from you with any football-related banter, then do email us at the usual address, which is sftw at telegraph.co. UK. But that's it this week from something for the weekend. Do hope you have something on your Easter weekend that makes it very, very special from us all. Bye-bye.